I mentioned the Mark of the Beast in my last video a little bit, and I didn't really want to get into it too much there. I've done many videos on it in the past, and it's very obvious to me now after studying the scripture out the last couple of years that the Mark of the Beast is spiritual and it's not something necessarily physical. There may be physical manifestations in the future that would show whether or not you, you know, were in the image of the beast or not. But for now, I don't believe that there is something like physical that you're going to go out and get and that's going to be it. For one thing, people try to scare people with the idea that, you know, if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to end up in fiery hell for eternity, which is just wrong. It's not scriptural at all. Um, the, it's a pagan belief in this hellfire that people get tortured in uh, conscious torment forever. That's just ridiculous. Um, and sadly, there's a lot of people on YouTube still pushing that. But um, that's not scriptural. And, you know, what is scriptural is that the mark of God in Exodus is something spiritual that you get when you keep the commandments. So the mark of the beast is the opposite of that. And what's in your forehead are your thoughts. And what's in your hand is what's in your heart. Because what's in your heart is going to show up in what you do, your actions. Your hands show your actions. Online, it's even more important. Your hands type your words. It's basically showing what's coming out of your mouth when you're typing to people. And if there's a bunch of anger coming out of your hands onto Facebook or comment sections on YouTube or Twitter, you know, whatever, if that's coming out with your hands, you know, that's a mark on your hands of who you belong to. If you're typing out a bunch of hateful messages, threatening people, then, you know, your hands are marked with that hate. You've got the mark of the beast on your hands there. But if your hands are typing out a message of repentance and following the Ten Commandments, well, that's in the image of God, you know? Um, so the difference between that is, of course, keeping the commandments, whether you keep them or whether you don't. Really, that's all it takes. If you have heard the good news, the gospel, and returned to your sin, then you are likened to a dog, like a beast. You've gone back to your sin, and there's no forgiveness if you willfully sin. So I've spoken on this in the past, of course. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church actually uh, declared those who don't believe in the Trinity as heretics. It said heretics are defined as those who do not observe the Nicene faith. Their teachings are forbidden. A definition of the Trinity, Ugia, is established. Catholic churches throughout the empire are to be returned to Orthodox bishops. And in 407 AD, that was 381. In 407 AD, it says uh, Manichaeans, Pyregians, and uh, Priscillianists are signaled out as heretics. Their beliefs are considered public crimes on the grounds that crime against religion is detrimental to all. So, of course, the Trinity people, um, those who rejected the Trinity, would be signaled out as a heretic because their beliefs are considered public crimes also. So they may not give gifts in their wills, make contracts, or buy and sell. Their slaves may leave them. Their children are not allowed to inherit from them unless they renounce such heresy. Provincial governors will be fined if they fail to punish those convicted of these heresies. So I'll leave these links below. This is the page where I got that from. See here, their children are not allowed to inherit from them, and they cannot buy and sell. Heretics. The Roman Catholic Church, whoever they declared as a heretic, was not allowed to buy and sell. This was in 407 AD. Now what's interesting is in 2017, July 14th, we've got a lawsuit of somebody who is a Jew. They converted to Judaism and they're no longer allowed to inherit what their parents, uh, you know, had. Um, so let's see here.
Right, these rules prevent children and grandchildren of current owners from inheriting cottages because they do not meet the religious test, sometimes interrupting a family tradition of four and as much as six generations. Sarah Prescott, the attorney, the attorney representing the Bayview Chatuaka Inclusiveness Group, said in a news release. And uh, another plaintiff converted to Judaism, and she was denied membership, which resulted in her being unable to be a co-owner of her parents' cottage, according to the lawsuit. Interesting. See, the um, it's a community here in which residents are occupy their homes from May to October, uh, but they require you to be Christian. It says Bayview requires members and cottage owners to be of a Christian persuasion. A pastor or church leader must attest to a person's membership or attendance at a church to be part of Bayview. I mentioned in my last video, I think, of uh, how the mark of the beast could lead somebody to taking communion. I don't believe that communion would be actually the mark of uh, somebody, but you know, I think that the Roman Catholic Church is basically the religion that people would be turning to, that paganism, basically. Um, so it wouldn't shock me to see people get back into the churches. And we already see that the Protestants are coming together with the Roman Catholic Church this year because Halloween, October 31st, is the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther nailing his theses to the wall, and they are deciding to stop being Protestants. They're coming back to the Roman Catholic Church this year, and so they're going to celebrate Halloween with that coming together with the Antichrist Church, basically. And when I looked into it into the past, it did have something to do with communion. They are, um, you know, saying that they agree about the communion issue with the Roman Catholic Church. The Protestants basically just rolled over. Uh, well, that's to be expected, right? The Roman Catholic Church is going to rule those with the Antichrist spirit anyway. So, um, you know, Communion is something that those who follow the Antichrist Church will probably end up doing, taking. It's a representation of cannibalism, and they probably will end up eating their babies anyway, because the Bible has a warning that those who don't follow our Father are going to end up eating their babies. So, um, you know, that's something that might happen. I believe there is fetal, fetal DNA in various foods and things like that too. Uh, so I try to eat as natural as possible. I think it's more the meats and all that, but anyway, I digress, right? There is this one uh, website too that talks about Ash Wednesday being a prefiguring of the Mark of the Beast. It's interesting, um, but again, I don't think that's going to be the actual mark because you can just wash that off. And I know about the chip. I don't agree with the chip. That is something that people have been forced into taking and have been scared the living daylights out of them uh, with people trying to tell them that they're going to end up in hell because they have a chip in them. That's just ridiculous. Um, it's just ridiculous. It's really sad to see that fear mongering in the Christian religion. It's actually a cult, really. Christianity is basically a cult, um, which I did a whole video on. But I digress again. We see that the Roman Catholic Church has put in place laws that would forbid people to buy and sell in the past. It is not unlikely that they would do the same in the future. And in the book of Jasher, people are, you know, the strangers would come into Sodom and people would give them coins, but there would be a law that said that you could not, you know, give them food. So they would just, you know, starve to death. That was the law. Um, these people were picked on and killed simply because they were an outsider. Had nothing to do with any mark on them. It was just the attitude in them. The Antichrist spirit inside somebody knows the Holy Spirit. And when they meet up, 
they hate the Holy Spirit. That's why when somebody is acting holy, that is set apart, the world hates them. The world hates them. If you start doing what our Messiah told you to do and walking in his footsteps and stopping sinning, the world will hate you. Once you get holy, the world hates you because the world is an enemy of God. They are an enemy of you when you are in the image of God. I'll leave a link below to the playlist that I did on the Mark of the Beast and my thoughts and Christina from Chris and Love's thoughts. We've done a lot of research on this in the past uh, few years and it all lines up with the scripture. What doesn't line up with the scripture is some sort of, you know, chip. That doesn't. The eternal hellfire for people who take the mark, uh, no. The word there is aeonian. It's an age, an age and an age, or an age of ages. It is not forever and ever. And fire in the scriptures is purificatory. It's for purification. It purifies us. The Holy Spirit is fire. God is a consuming fire. So please just study this out yourself before making any rash judgments. Um, like I said, I've got many videos. You can study them. And Chris has some videos in the playlist too. Shalom.